Hello everyone, hope you are all staying safe at home. Since physical lectures are not possible anytime soon, so I have decided to actually create uh, videos of the lectures. So as you have, uh, you might have already seen that I have been sharing some of the lecture slides for the subsequent lectures. So all those uh, lecture slides, um, uh, I'm going to divide them into shorter segments based on topics. And then uh, in the videos, I'll go over each of these short segments and each video will be shared with you. And uh, at the same time, I have also created a course page uh, in Piazza. So the link is uh, uh, you can see here. Uh, so please go there and enroll uh, in the Piazza link. All the course material will be shared uh, in the Piazza. And you can also post your queries so we can interact through Piazza uh, after watching the videos or reading the materials. If you have any question, you can post your queries in Piazza and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. So with that, we'll go ahead and start with the today's lecture topic. So in our last physical lecture, we, we were discussing about position specific score matrix, in short PSSM. And uh, in the same lecture uh, material, to continue with PSSM, uh, I'm going to, going to continue with an algorithm called Cyblast. So, as you might recall, that position-specific score matrix basically stores the frequencies of each residue at a specific position of a multiple alignment. And uh, this is also basically, it does not consider any gaps. So here, uh, in this slide, you are seeing some examples also. So this is a particular multiple sequence alignment and the frequencies for each position for each amino acid are calculated over here. And then it will give rise to a table corresponding to the number of uh, residues, which is in this case amino acids on the rows. And the columns are basically specific positions in the alignment. And based on these, we are going to have each entry will store the frequency of seeing a particular amino acid at that particular position. And at the same time, we also saw some uh, uh, techniques for adding pseudo counts for the particular amino acids that are not observed at a certain position. And we also saw how to create PSSMs and how to interpret them. So now, I'll move on to a different topic, which is basically how to use this position specific score matrix while searching the database. Now, if we have very carefully constructed a PSSM, it can be very powerful and a very sensitive tool in uh, terms of searching the database. And it has the ability to find many distant members of a protein sequence family which are not easily found by a standard sequence search. So keeping in mind that uh, the uh, researchers who actually created BLAST, they actually wanted to enhance their uh, BLAST database searching method by incorporating this PSSM. And for that, they came up with a version of BLAST, which is known as Cyblast. That is position specific iterated BLAST. And uh, this Cyblast is basically uh, a BLAST technique for searching protein databases. And this is basically also very helpful for searching protein sequences. So as you can understand from the name itself that this version of BLAST basically enhances the basic BLAST database searching by incorporating PSSM. So we are going to see that in the search process it is going to use uh, position specific score matrix instead of a single sequence and uh, other important term here is this term iterated so we'll see that this blast is actually an iterated technique and it basically involves series of repeated steps so that's why it is iterative so let us go over the psi blast algorithm then so it, as I said earlier, it has multiple steps. First step is basically to perform the standard BLAST search using a particular substitution matrix, which is most commonly BLOSOM62 is used. But if you go to the 
website for Cyblast, you will see other metrics being uh, that you can choose. So we have a single query sequence, which is basically a protein sequence. And the first step is to perform a standard BLAST search. So this initial BLAST search will give us a set of related sequence. Now, we want to be very careful about finding this uh, initial set of sequence. And these initial sequences, uh, we are only going to select with a BLAST score, which gives an E value smaller than a predetermined cutoff. And in this particular step, we, are, we can be very um, uh, stringent to ensure only true significant matches are identified. Next, we are going to create a position-specific score matrix based on the alignments of these significant matches that we obtained from our previous step. So we have to be very careful in choosing the sequence at this point, even if BLAST actually returns a lot of uh, related sequence, we have to carefully choose the ones that have significant matches. So at the end of this step three, we have created a position specific score matrix. Now there will be another next step where we are going to use this position specific score matrix to scan the database. And in this particular step, we are going to use a variant of the BLAST program so that we can identify new sequences with suitably small E values. So here we are encountering a new E value so there was one E value for selecting the initial set of sequences at step two. And now we have another E value for selecting or identifying new sequences based on the position specific score matrix that was created from the initial sequence alignment. So this new search where we are actually searching the database with the PSSM, if this second search procedure finds some newly identified related sequences, then we can actually use them to update the PSSM. So of course, when we have obtained new related sequences, we are going to add them back to the alignment and update the position specific score matrix in that way. And these successive cycles of refining the position specific score matrix and database searching can be carried out uh, for some more iterations until no new sequences are found. So this is the whole algorithm for Cyblast. Now, in case of Cyblast, the PSSM that we create, so we have to actually think about the length of the profile. So we'll see that the profile actually we construct in case of Cyblast, it has the exactly same length as the query sequence. Now, you might recall that position specific score matrix does not account for gaps. So that we are going to do that in uh, the same fashion for uh, Cyblast also. So the query sequence is basically our sequence based on which we are going to find the newly new uh, related sequences. And then the alignment are, we are going to use are going to contain, uh, of course, um, some gaps which might actually uh, indicate insertions, but these insertions with respect to the query will be ignored while the profile or the PSSM is constructed. So this is an example over here. So for example, this is our query sequence and uh, this is this particular one here. This uh, subject is basically a related sequence returned from the database. Now, if we see uh, these three particular positions, we can see that these are um, showing gaps in the query sequence. So these are basically insertions in the related sequence. So this will be ignored while creating the profile. So in short, uh, the profile length would be same as the length of the query sequence. And there is another uh, important aspect while creating the position specific score matrix. Now this is a visual representation as you can see this blue rectangle over here is the query sequence and these are the different sequences that are aligned to the query sequence at different positions. Now 
in the PSSM, since it will be of the same length as the query sequence, and for each position in the query sequence, uh, there might be multiple se newly aligned sequences. Then uh, we have to restrict the PSSM or the construction of the PSSM to those residues which have been aligned to a residue in the query sequence. So for example, uh, and for each position in the residue of the query sequence, we'll have multiple different number of sequences that are aligned to that particular position. And while creating the PSSM, we are going to, going to use only those sequences whose alignments involve that position. So for an example, take a position, this particular position in the query sequence. So here, only five sequences are aligned, this one, this one, this one, and this one and this one. Whereas these two sequences, these are showing that uh, gaps. So only these five sequence along with the query sequence, so only uh, six residues will be considered for creating the position specific scores for this particular position. So if we continue this way, then the number of sequences that are used in the alignment changes from one column to another. So this is how the construction of the PSSM is going to happen for Cyblast. So for each position of the query sequence, we'll have uh, position specific scores and that position specific score will be determined based on the number of sequences that are actually aligned to that particular position. So it's not going to be the, all the sequences that are returned from the database, rather than it will be only limited to the number of sequences that are aligned at that particular position. Now, the way we are creating these profiles, we are actually initially doing a database search using the query sequence, and that is actually returning us a number of sequences. So these uh, related sequences, they have to be very carefully chosen. And as you can understand, the sequence, since the sequences are chosen based on the initial E values, so it becomes very critical the e-value parameter, uh, the e-values that we select for uh, searching the, for the initial searching is a very critical parameter uh, because that's how we are going to select the initial sequences. And oftentimes what we'll observe in case of Cyblast is that the profiles are corrupted if we do not carefully choose the sequences. So imagine the situation like if we select a sequence that is not very related to the query and if it is included in the Cyblast multiple alignment and that's how it will actually contribute in the construction of the profile. Now once we use this profile which ha already has an unrelated sequence once we use this profile in the second search phase of Cyblast, then it will actually bring many of its neighbors in the next iteration. And further, this can create a snowballing effect because once we add new uh, sequences to the profile, we are basically going to update the profile and uh, then it will actually deviate away and deviate much from the original query sequence. So oftentimes we'll see that uh, profiles are corrupted in case of uh, Cyblast and it's a major problem uh, and it is not just a problem with uh, just Cyblast it can be a problem with other iterative approaches for database searching as well because there can be a snowballing effect of including an unrelated sequence in the profile. Uh, so usually the e-value cutoff that we use in case of Cyblast in the, obviously in the second step that is uh, mostly uh, 0 0.001 but even this very small value can uh, also result in a corrupted uh, profile or PSSM. To exacerbate this process oftentimes sequence weighting has to be performed and uh, if we can carefully come up with a sequence weighting scheme we can actually reduce the effect of uh, possible corruption in the profile. So 
that was our PsyBlast algorithm. So if we compare it against BLAST, we can see that uh, PsyBlast has a uh, successive cycles involved where we are actually first uh, building a profile and then using that profile to search more sequences, use the new sequences to update the profile and this process basically iteratively goes on. And because of this cycling nature, PsyBlast can uh, find more distant homologs than a simple BLAST search. So oftentimes it has actually a very uh, beneficial effect in searching distant homologs compared to standard database large search using BLAST. And we can also see that in comparison with standard BLAST, PsyBlast basically uses two e values. And these two e values are corresponding to two different steps. Of course, we have first the threshold e value for the initial BLAST operation. And in the BLAST uh, website or um, web server, you, you, you can find it uh, with the argument minus e. So the default value of the threshold e value uh, is 10, as it is in the standard BLAST program. So this is basically the same as standard BLAST program. The first step is performing essentially a BLAST. And the next e value is basically we call it inclusion e value because based on this um, next search we are going to include some sequences in the profile. So this uh, is actually going to be very important as I was telling you in the previous slide that in this inclusion e value we have to be very critically choose it so that we can accept only related sequences in the PSSM construction and the default value is 0 0.001. So of course, uh, PsyBlast has certain advantages over standard BLAST. Uh, one of the very first uh, advantage of PsyBlast is that uh, it's very fast. So even if it is uh, actually scanning the database using a PSSM, because of the BLAST heuristic it uses, it uh, actually very quickly searches for related sequences. And secondly, the main advantage of using PsyBlast is that it actually allows to search for uh, related sequences on the large databases using position specific score metrics. So of course, apart from uh, the substitution scores, since we have position specific features that are involved in the search process, it can actually result in very identifying very much related sequences which are not found in the uh, just the direct BLAST uh, database search. And in case of PsyBlast, to actually deal with the pro profile uh, corruption, it uses a very efficient algorithm for sequence weighting. Now, when discussing about the position specific score metrics, uh, we discussed a position based based sequence weighting scheme because we understand that uh, the position specific feature is very much important in building the uh, PSSM. And so if we can use position specific features in our sequence weighting, that will be also beneficial in the end for building the profile. So in case of PsyBlast, they are also using the position based sequence weighting scheme, but it is slightly modified. So in the original position-based sequence weighting scheme, gaps were not at all considered. But in case of PsyBlast, it is actually going to consider gaps also. So gaps are uh, treated as another residue type. And uh, the fully conserved residues are uh, completely ignored because they are not uh, giving us any uh, more information other than that, than that, uh, that the site is completely conserved. And finally, uh, PsyBlast also has a very sophisticated statistical treatment of the math scores. So once we actually find the sequences, we can actually look at the all the statistics behind it to find uh, the math score is relevant. And then we can include that uh, particular sequence in, our, in constructing the profile. While a PsyBlast has different advantages, we have to be also very uh, cautious when using this PsyBlast. So if we are going to use very, very close sequences, then sometimes we might overfit. So of course, the idea of PsyBlast was to find uh, distant homologs. And that's why 
we thought of using position specific score metrics because in the position specific score metrics certain positional features of the family of sequences might be stored so even if some sequences has diverged much from the family and uh, this can be actually retrieved using these positional features but if we are only using very close sequences then we are actually going to have a profile which is very much conserved and which will not have all the necessary pro uh, positional features so that might lead to overfit and due to profile corruption if we are not careful uh, in uh, selecting the sequences then it can actually give rise to many false positive homologs so that's why when we actually receive the initial set of related sequence we have to very carefully look into them and we should include or exclude some sequences based on prior biological knowledge if that is possible otherwise we should rely on the math score and carefully look into the statistics of uh, matching these um, sequences with the query sequences and the e value that we have it actually reflects the significance of the match to the previous training set not the original sequence so now you have to understand that here we have a iterative process going on so we have to be very careful about the e value once we have constructed the pssm then uh, in the next iteration the e value that we see for a particular uh, uh, sequence that have been identified during the search with the pssm this e value actually reflects the significance of the match of the uh, match to the previous training set which is again the pssm or the profile so if the profile is already corrupted even a significant e value will not be very good because it's essentially is not helpful in uh, finding the sequence that are actually matching to the original sequence rather it's actually matching to the profile so we have to be very careful about uh, using these uh, e values that we see with cyblast So this is a screenshot of the uh, website uh, where uh, you can go and uh, do a query for Cyblast. So this particular box over here, here you can enter the first sequence um, for which you want to perform the Blast, uh, the Cyblast. Or you can actually upload the file also here. So this database that you want to search, uh, you can choose from many different databases. Um, and so in this, you are seeing a non-redundant protein sequences, but there are Uniprot, Swissprot, and other uh, protein databases over here that you can choose from. And in the algorithm part, you have to choose for Cyblast, which is position-specific iterated blast. There are other parameters that you can tune. So of course, there are um, uh, algorithm parameters. So you can choose the number of target sequences and that will be aligned and uh, displayed when you search. Then uh, the expected threshold, so this is the um, uh, threshold uh, cutoff for the initial search which default value is 10. And then uh, you can choose the scoring metrics. So Blossom 62 is the default but you have other metrics that you can choose from. You can also choose uh, the gap penalties there are different options for doing that and finally this is the second iteration blast which is basically the inclusion e value so this threshold you can choose it to be 0 0.001 or 0 0.0001 to make it even more stringent if you want to use pseudo count you can choose here so if we are using let's say laplace's uh, pseudo count value then we can use one over here and then you have to click this button with uh, blast to actually start this uh, searching process. So this is the our discussion on Cyblast. Uh, so I'll post this video uh, and share the link with you soon. And if you have any questions, so you can uh, post uh, queries in the Piazza website. So that will be all for today. Thank you.